Welcome to Hamsteria. Welcome to our hamster town. I am Mark the Elder. We're just like you, but in the dirt, a hammer of hamster helpers. I am Jill the hamster baker, and I make our dirty bread. And I am Craig the hamster bear, our loaves come from my head. <laughs> Farmers never had nothing more But I looked to the surface to my one true love Outside my hamster door But you looked to the surface to my one true love Outside our hamster door I'm Mike the hamster Okay, uh, you know what? Can we stop? This is insane Uh, let's all stop Listen, the reason no one really knows anything about us Are, are songs like this Things like this it's too tempting not to imagine these peaceful villages of underground furry creatures, but it doesn't work that way. My name is Blacksmith Hamster Bill Blacksmith Hamster by craft, and if you meet a hamster sword, it shall cut you in half. And when I leap upon the hill, I see the women fair. They run around and touch me nice upon my luscious hair. The dance number is off. We're not doing that. Oh. No more dance number. Uh, all right, what's this then? Um, just me part or the whole thing? Because if I can part... Mark barely showed up to rehearsal, and I think that if he thinks he can get away... No, the whole thing! This is what I'm talking about, though. There are real facts about hamsters to learn. We, we, not just... We, what are you, Smith, Bill? Uh, I don't know. Um, swords. Hamster swords. What is a hamster sword? What are you talking about? Jill, where did you even get the ability to make bread? These are chicken eggs I painted. My dress is made of plastic bags. Well, as mayor of this town, I believe... Stop, stop, stop. You're like the worst of them all. Listen, I get it. But I think hamsters are pretty cool without fiction. So now, I present to you the hard truth. The fascinating past of the noble, brave, and strange hamster. Enjoy. In the beginning... There was nothing, for as eons droned on, no one had heard of the hamster. Until 1797, when Patrick Russell, studying all the wildlife in Aleppo, Syria, makes but one note about an animal he calls Musk Recitus, the Golden Mouse. Though brief, it is by far the cutest introduction of any animal in history. The Golden Mouse has an amazing ability to store beans neatly in its mouth. I measured the beans once the beast was filled to its satisfaction. When laid loose upon the table, they formed a heap three times the bulk of the animal's body. And then, into obscurity, the hamster faded again. Until 1839, when a British zoologist, George Waterhouse, writes a simple phrase upon presenting a skeleton from an unknown, unnamed source. It was a new species, Crescitus oratus, golden hamster. Then, as rodents are wont to do, and as the hamster had done before, it disappears from the historical record for many years. So, did they come back as the most revered animal in the land? Did Teddy Roosevelt hunt them on the safari? No. Although the world's largest variety, the wild European hamster, does terrorize European farmers, at, while standing at a whopping 8 to 12 inches tall. In fact, legendary big game hunter President Teddy Roosevelt probably lived and died without ever having seen or heard of a hamster. Not until 1930, nearly 100 years after George Waterhouse first recorded the first hamster first, does the hamster begin its ascent to fame. When Professor Aharoni of Jerusalem University returns to Syria, the very place that Waterhouse Firstly, did in the first place, did first off. 
Hamsters have, through their long history, been a brave soldier on the front line of science. Strangely, what makes them great for science is an attribute called hot blood, which means hamsters catch and show symptoms of a sickness very quickly. Thanks for being great at being unhealthy, guys! At the time, the Chinese hamster, a very little hamster with a pronounced tail, was a part of Professor Aharoni's research. Political issues in 1930s China made shipping difficult. However, there were also problems getting the hamsters to breed quickly enough. Aharoni, being a mighty scientist, was sent into the field to look for new hamsters. College-educated man looking for stinking rodents. Wait now. Using directions from a royal sheik, Aharoni had discovered the long-lost but locally known golden hamster. A litter, Aharoni had struck gold and, upon disturbing the nest of the mother and her young, she ate some of them. Wait, what? Okay, alright, okay. So, after some uh, rearranging, escape, and murder like that of the most dramatic soap opera, a little of the original cast was gone. Three hamsters remain. However, as we'll get to later on, a breeding mother can often cannibalize for a number of reasons, thus making breeding a precarious prospect, and keeping hamsters together can often lead to trouble. And from there, in the name of science, the Syrian, or golden hamster, grew and grew in population, and all from that one original family Aharoni found. How the hamster spread so successfully is a mystery, considering it was illegal to bring the then new and exotic and wild animal into many countries. Eventually though, the golden hamster made its way to America. Now, it should be understood that before this time, pets were a different thing entirely. Animals were used for labor, and sometimes those animals were loved a little more than others. And there was a slowly rising market of fish and a lot of birds, both of which had been pets of the upper class for some time. However, thanks to a man named Albert Marsh, the author of The Hamster Manual, the hamster became bigger than sliced bread. Not, not literally, I mean, I mean, I think one piece of sliced bread smooshed up is about the size of a hamster. Catching wind of how desperately scientists had need of hamsters, and at the same time lacked the time to breed them, Albert Marsh dedicated himself to providing labs with hamsters. However, Marsh did something no one else had done before, and supplemented his direct sales to scientists by posting ads to not only get other breeders in on his sweet deal, but to conveniently have them buy litters of hamsters and supplies from his company. Outsourcing farming of hamsters was not unique as we learned earlier. Marsh's brilliance was in claiming potential breeders could sell animals to their neighbors because, quote, they make ideal pets. In fact, although there is a big warning at the front of the book saying that the hamster manual is not an advertisement for his own hamster supply company and hamstery, yes, hamstery is a word, the back end is littered with testimonials of how people had such a fun time raising their hamsters and how much they loved them how easy they were to raise and breed, and how well their sales had been going. And Albert even says himself, the hamster sells himself to those who see him. These testimonials, by the way, are all coincidentally Marsh's own customers. So the book is, at the very least, a biased push for the hamster industry. From this, it can be said, the modern pet store and modern attitude towards pets exploded onto the world. Marsh was right about how easy and great selling hamsters were. And eventually, he himself became irrelevant to the business of hamsters, because all across the country, people were buying and breeding hamsters on their own. Being affectionate towards dogs and cats and ferrets and other working animals was a practice thousands of years old at this point. And although children had long been taking care of rabbits and squirrels, and about 100 years before the hamster, guinea pigs or cavies became pets. But it is the sheer popularity of the hamster that makes it unique. After the hamster, the modern pet industry develops, animals having value for simply being good pets. Therefore, it may be said, for good or bad, that the golden Syrian hamster is in fact the first pet. However, their ability to sit in a box and be adorable is not the hamster's only skill. 
Take, for example, the Campbell's hamster. Mongolian in origin, the Campbell hamster is one of the only hamsters to live in groups. Their group effort of hoarding food can wreak havoc on farmers. A Campbell colony is more than capable of stealing 240 pounds of grain into their massive burrows. Oh yeah, and in case you're wondering from before, hamsters live alone. In one experiment, two hamsters had over 20 square feet to themselves and were divided by a wall. When the wall was removed, it was an all-out brawl. Do not get two hamsters without a significant amount of research, monitoring, patience, and resources to deal with the possibility that they may not be compatible. Before the actual vicious fighting, hamster body language for aggression actually looks like this and is a little too cute. <sighs> hamsters eat their own poop in an act called corprophagy. This is done to harvest the vitamins, K in particular, left in the droppings. We don't need to see that. The hamster is an underground animal. And even your average golden Syrian could dig a two to ten foot tunnel, given the chance. As a subterranean creature, the hamster does not swim often, but it can if necessary. However, the Crescitus Crescitus variety will puff its massive cheeks to create flotation devices. We should go over the word cheek pouch, because it isn't really a cheek. While hamsters do access this pouch from their cheeks, it is more like a shoulder pouch that extends almost half the length of the hamster, about the same as wearing a backpack that starts at your cheek. As we've heard, hamster breeding is a complicated matter that can result in many diseases, including a serious brain disorder where the animal backflips incessantly. And up ready for it? Anophthalmic hamsters are also a common breeding disorder in which the animal is born with no eyes. They don't have rubber ducks instead of eyes, but this image was significantly more fun to look at. Hamsters are fast and productive breeders, but the female has an ability called post-amplantation. This gives her the ability to end her pregnancy. Though the reasons are unknown and varied, it is likely because of a lack of resources. Scents are everything to a hamster. Their sense of smell is impeccable, but making scents are just as important. Marking, or putting scents on things, is done all the time. Hamsters cover everything in smells. Marking can be used from everything to aggression, to territory marking, and mating. Hamsters even have a scent gland behind their eyes called hardarian glands. Hamsters not only have amazing hearing that allows them to hear sub and ultrasonic noise, but produce sound so quickly that humans do not have the ability to process it. Noises can last as short as 60 milliseconds. That is seven times shorter than the amount of time it takes for a baseball to leave a professional baseball pitcher's hand and reach home plate. Pretty interesting, right? I told you.